All right, everyone. Everyone can smile. It's a nice full room today. So, for those of you that, who don't know me, I'm Jat. Uh, I do a lot with PowerShell, and unfortunately, sometimes I still use the GUI as well. So, anyone here who never touches the GUI, who has days where he never touches the GUI? Days? And that are not the weekend? Fantastic. Please come up here. You should help me with this because I get stuck in the. <laughs> So what we will be talking about today is uh, how we can automate some stuff uh, that is uh, that you would normally do in the GUI, and I'll be using a couple of different techniques and uh, have some demos in which I demonstrate how uh, how I do that. So the agenda for today, uh, I'm going to show how to set up PowerShell logging. Uh, is everyone familiar with PowerShell logging? I see. A little bit familiar? Okay, that's good, because I have a, a short five-minute demo, how to set it up using GPO and PowerShell itself. So we'll go over that. Uh, then I'll show how you can use uh, PowerShell logging to dive into Server Manager. As you know, Server Manager is a really nice tool. Since uh, 2012, you can manage multiple servers at the same time. Unfortunately, we don't get code, so we can't easily replicate what we're doing in uh, Server Manager. So we'll go over that, and then for the last demo, I'll be showing how to use a Process Monitor, it's a Sys internals tool. Uh, what we'll be using it for is, uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at uh, what is happening in the background, what's written to disk, what's, what's written to the registry, and then we use that as a basis to start building scripts. So that's not a method of getting, to, uh, getting away from the GUI and just automating it away. And at the end, we have some time for some questions. Uh, we have the big yellow, uh, what's that called in English? Hourglass here. So I have to keep it short. Um, when I'm doing demos, uh, I like to keep it interactive. So if you guys have any questions about uh, what I'm showing or something's unclear, just raise your hands or just shout the app. I usually respond within two weeks. Uh, yeah, you can take photos of everything. Uh, afterwards, I'll put this up on GitHub, uh, probably tonight. Whenever I get online again, uh, everything will be available. Uh, any questions so far? <laughs> Good. All right. So I briefly went over it. Uh, I'm going to use two different ways of uh, seeing what's happening when we are using the GUI. One thing I'll be doing is using PowerShell Logging. That's also going to be the first demo. Uh, PowerShell Logging was introduced, well, was properly introduced in PowerShell 5. Uh, if any of you went to uh, Will Soder's uh, presentation, you know why it's important to have PowerShell Logging, because if guys like him get onto your network, you want to see what he's doing. Uh, the second one is uh, Sys Internals, uh, specifically uh, Pokemon. So Pokemon is a very powerful tool. Uh, I still think it's a shame that we don't have an equivalent in PowerShell yet, but I'll be showing how we can use it uh, using just PowerShell, so we don't actually have to open the application anymore. Cool, so let's get into it. Uh, setting up PowerShell logging. So for all of you who've already used it, uh, this is going to be a bit basic, but I'll go through it quickly. So, I'm going to connect to my 2016 server, and this one still has a GUI, it's very nice for demos, please don't install it with a GUI, uh, yep. <laughs> so, in order to set up logging uh, in PowerShell, it's just a couple of registry keys we're going to set up. We're going to set up two different kinds of logging, we're going to set up transcription logging, so transcription logging, if you ever use the start transcript uh, command set, it's similar to that, only it's uh, done on a, uh, on a policy basis. You can set it as a policy basis in PowerShell 5. Um, so the second part is scriptbox logging. Uh, what we're doing there is we'll have the PowerShell engine uh, log anything to the event log, and then specifically to, um, let me see, 
specifically to uh, PowerShell uh, operational log. That's very nice. So I'll just execute this code. So it's enabled on this uh, server. Here we go. So we're just setting the value for script log logging uh, to one, and also for invocation logging. And what invocation logging is, is that it puts a header in the transcript for every command that's executed, the list, the exact time, username, uh, and a lot of other details. I'll uh, show what it looks like in a minute. Uh, for transcription, we have to set up a bit more. Uh, we also uh, we also enable the invocation header, but we also have to uh, set up an uh, uh, output directory. So, run this. So the folder already exists. That's good. So this is how we can do it in a scripted way, because we don't like GUIs, and this is a good way of doing it. Uh, Alternatively, we can also set it as a local policy. So open up MMC. This is probably going to be small. So probably not uh, let's see. I'll add the local policy editor. Or I thought I did. Here we go. And I'll zoom in in a second. I'll just browse to the correct one. So it's the computer configuration, uh, administrative templates, Windows components, and Windows PowerShell. And let's show it back here. So these are the settings uh, we want to configure. We want to turn on scriptbook logging, we set this to enable, and we turn on PowerShell transcription. I'll quickly dive into the settings. So, what you can see here, it's uh, set to enabled, and we also set up the invocation header. So this is uh, exactly the same as we just did in the registry. Similarly, for PowerShell transcription, there you go. You can see that those registry settings also uh, map to what we're setting up in the policy. So this is, uh, to me, quite easy to set up. But this is on a local system. Uh, most of you will be running in a domain environment. So I'll connect to my DC and show how I've set it up there. Uh, if you're wondering what all the top, uh, all the keys are, uh, I have an application so you can see what I'm typing. Uh, so sometimes it gets a bit spammy. Uh, I already typed all my passwords. Uh, if you do type my password, uh, raise your hand and please let me know. So here we are on the DC. I'll zoom it out in a second. So here we are, we have a group policy set up, configured with uh, the same settings I just showed in the local, uh, local editor. So quite easy to set up, uh, it depends, yeah? Uh, yeah, yeah. So you can also make it uh, an existing folder, you could put it in the public folder. Uh, what, is, what is better practice? is to put it up on a file share on which, uh, uh, on which the computer or, uh, only has uh, rights to write to that share. Uh, no read rights, uh, no, no modify rights. So then uh, you, can also not, uh, you can also not change it or delete it. Then it will not write anything. Mm -hmm. It will execute, but it will not log. So transcription is a bit uh, dicey in that way. Uh, that's why I also set up uh, event logging. 
And I'll also be showing some examples of uh, other disadvantages of uh, transcription. Uh, it has the same disadvantages as using the console. When you're using the console, you sometimes see that PowerShell cuts off stuff. If you have a large array, it will say dot, dot, dot. That also happens with transcription language. Uh, yes, I'm going to show you how fast it goes. Um, but it uh, for one session. Yeah, I can uh, show what the folder looks like. Because oh, we've been running it for two weeks. I think in this box. Let's take a look. So it's C transcription, and for every day that I Again, PowerShell commands, or uh, it's not just uh, starting in PowerShell or an ISE, it's also starting any kind of uh, PowerShell. It's the PowerShell engine. So. And for. There we go. It creates a different file for every session. Let's zoom in on this. And it will log the server name, so you can all write to the same folder. It will not be overwriting anything. And you see there's a bit of randomized uh, randomized characters, and then the date timestamp. So what I've shown now is how we can set up a uh, script uh, script log logging, transcription logging, uh, how we can set it up locally, and how we can set up using uh, AD. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to execute some PowerShell code, and I'm going to show what it looks like both in the transcription logs and in the event logs, and what kind of things we can, uh, we can find out about the code that's executed. So, uh, in this demo, I'll be showing uh, uh, what happens if server manager is executing PowerShell commands uh, on the server? Because it is actually also using PowerShell in the root, it's just not exposing what it's doing. So, for all the code, can everyone read it in the back as well? Luke? Good, thank you. So what I've done on this server, I've installed IAS. I didn't want to make you guys wait for an IAS installation and having to reboot the server, so I've already done that. And I'll specify the path of the transcription log. And we'll go take a look at what is in, in there. So I'll do invoke item. And we'll take a look at the text file. Oh, a lot bigger. Okay. So we can see the this is what is called the invocation header. So we get a lot of information when it was started, uh, who it was started by, also what a UNS user is. In this case, it's the same. Uh, Runs users are used if it was uh, a PowerShell session connected to an endpoint. An endpoint can have a run as user. And what you can see is a whole lot of commands. This is a 50k file, and browsing through it like this will be a bit painful. So what I've done is I've used get content, and I'll strip out the information that is uh, that is more interesting for us. Execute that and see what it comes back with. So here I filtered out all the uh, PowerShell commands and the uh, uh, accompanying parameters. So what you can see here, the moment I started with uh, with the installation of IAS, it uses the add uh, internal Windows role command. Uh, we move to uh, no reboot. And you can see all the parameter, uh, all the arguments that were input in the parameter as well. 
So this is a bit of a strange commandlet because this is not a commandlet that you would normally use when you're adding features to your Windows server. You would usually use install Windows feature or get Windows feature, install Windows feature. So this is actually, uh, this comes from the internal PowerShell uh, module uh, of server manager. So what I want to highlight I already touched, uh, uh, touched on it when I was talking about the difference between uh, event logs and transcription logging. What you can see here is that we get the dot dot dot. So that means uh, we've reached the width of the, of the console. There was actually no PowerShell console, but uh, it does not provide us all the output. And this is kind of important because we want to know what we installed here. And dot 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 is not a component. So in order to do that, we'll go to the uh, we'll go to the event log, and we'll take a look at uh, what is stored there. So I'm connecting again to the IIS server. And I'll show the event log. This is one of the stranger commandlets uh, in PowerShell. You can actually do show event log and it will just open event viewer. So we'll go into, uh, it's a little bit small, I'll zoom in once I've navigated to the third uh, path. So I'm going to, uh, uh, to Microsoft, Windows, and then to PowerShell. So we have uh, two PowerShell logs here. Jump out of it. You have two PowerShell logs here. You have the admin log and we have the operational log. So what we've enabled uh, with the settings I've just set up is the operational log. And the operational log will log anything the PowerShell engine is doing. So let's take a look at uh, this specific part where it was uh, defining which components were installed for IAS. And we'll do that in the GUI first, and then we'll use PowerShell for that. Uh, we'll filter the current log. And go for And I'll show what it looks like when something is executed. Yeah. I think my log has ro rotated over because I can't find the entry uh, I'm looking for in GUI. I'll just use the PowerShell uh, command that instead. So I'll just use uh, get, uh, get win event. And I'll put a filter on there with a specific entry I'm looking for. So you can establish uh, what was installed exactly. So. No. Here we go, we get uh, information, let's down a bit more, we'll do expand property message. You can see that there's a lot of information in the event log, and we can also see that uh, the parameter binding is defined uh, per uh, a per entry in the, in the array that was entered. So in the previous example, I showed that it stopped after console, then it went to dot dot dot, if we look in the event log, we can see that it goes all the way to uh, another seven entries here. So this way we have established what, uh, what the commandlet was doing and what was exactly installed on the server. And we can also split this up a bit. I like regular expressions. Uh, is everyone familiar with regular expressions? 
it is it, it is a major pain to get started with it. It has a very high learning curve. If you think PowerShell has a high learning curve, regular expressions are worse. But they're very nice as well once you get the hang of it. So. So what I'll be doing here is I'll strip out all the information that I'm not interested in and I'll just get a list of all the components that were installed. So now we can see that let's count this. Counting is cool. So we see we have 15 components installed for IAS. So to get back to uh, what kind of module uh, has installed this, because the command that uh, the command that was used was what was it called? Uh, add internal win uh, add internal Windows though is not a command that's available by default on uh, Windows Server. At least not uh, if not exposed in your normal PowerShell session. So let's take a look at uh, what kind of module is behind this. So. so here is the Here's the mod module folder. Uh, to make it easier to zoom in, I copied it to my local folder. This one is stored in uh, C Windows System uh, Server Manager uh, internal. And what you can see is uh, there's just a 1KB uh, PSM file. And let's take a look at what kind of tools are defined in here. And you can see here uh, the add underscore internal Windows role is actually a XAML. Uh, component of the module. So let's dive a little bit deeper into what uh, what the module looks like. So first, uh, are you familiar with Skip Analyzer? Skip Analyzer does a, a round of basic checks against uh, a module or a skip, and you can check if it's uh, getting using uh, good coding. And it's always fun to run this against Microsoft uh, modules. So let's take a look. We already get the first exception. You see here the percentage is an alias of for each object. So that's bad practice. I sometimes use it in my modules as well because it's such a nice shorthand. So that doesn't seem too bad. Let's take a look at what the module actually looks like. So there's some nice help in here. And what we can see here uh, is uh, that it's mm -hmm. uh, the internal is not uh, is not in here. What I want to show is that it also uh, uh, makes it own uh, it, uh, makes it own. Uh, logs to the event log. So whenever anything is executed by this module, it writes specific events to the event log. So you can uh, you can trace this way what server manager is uh, doing in the background. So go back to the box and show what that looks like. Go to applications and services. It's one of the new, uh, well, new, uh, not a classic event log. See there's a number of events available and the one we are interested in is uh, the operational log of uh, server manager multiple machine. We did not run it against multiple machines but this is where, uh, where the command looks log to. So you can use this event log to dive deeper into what server manager is logging and what it's used for.
All right. So the last part about uh, PowerShell, uh, PowerShell event logging. I got a question. What happens if uh, uh, if the log is full, or if the disk does not exist, or the share does not exist? Uh, basically, the PowerShell engine will keep on running. Uh, logging is not an essential uh, part of uh, of PowerShell. The engine will keep on doing its job. Uh, this is also a problem if your system has been uh, has been compromised, because anyone who compromises your system can also disable any kind of logging or spoof any kind of logging. So, um, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, what I can recommend to you is there. Uh, so the question was, uh, can we directly send PowerShell logs to Splunk? I know that Jared Atkinson is actually covering this in his session this afternoon. I think it's at four o'clock or five o'clock. He has a session on defensive PowerShell, and he utilizes Splunk uh, for this purpose. Does that answer your question? <laughs> I don't know, I've never used one. Uh, uh, does Splunk work with event forwarding? Can you just directly... Yes? I'm doing two things. I'm logging to disk, and those are just plain text files, and I'm logging to the event log. Yes. No problem. So what we can see here is the size of the log is uh, 13 uh, megabytes, and the default size, uh, if you go to properties of the log, you can see it's 15 MB. I just enabled this two weeks ago. Uh, it's my demo machine. I haven't run much code on it, and I'm almost at the maximum of my log. So it fills up quite quickly. So if you set up logging, make it a consideration of how important your data is, and if you actually need all the information. Uh, if you're sending it off to Splunk or something else, have some kind of filtering in place so you don't send all the events that you're actually not looking for. All right. So what we've done, we configured the server with IAS. We've taken a look at what is in the in the transaction logs. We saw that the transaction logs sometimes truncate the output uh, or the arguments that are put into a parameter. We can dive into the event logs. There's more information there. Uh, and uh, I've shown where the uh, the server manager module is. So even though all the commandlets that are used by the server manager module are exposed using PowerShell logging, uh, I would not advise replicating, uh, replicating those commands directly because uh, in most cases it's better to just use the install Windows feature commandlet. But if you want to know uh, what someone has done in the GUI, you can use these tools to figure out what was configured exactly on your server. Does that make sense? Good. So, this was a short introduction uh, to what you can do with PowerShell logging. Uh, one, other, uh, one other thing I do with it, uh, in my day-to-day -day job, I do a lot of automation. I try to automate my clients' environments as much as possible because I like drinking coffee and playing pool. So. Um, what I uh, use PowerShell logging for on our jump host and management servers, I enable PowerShell logging so I can see what kind of scripts are being executed, uh, what kind of manual steps my colleagues and the clients are taking over our environment. Uh, I make reports of that and based on those reports, I, uh, I figure out what would be the next logical thing to automate. Because if you walk up to your colleague to ask, what, what would you like me to script next? And then usually I just get a glare, they're looking at me, I have no idea. Or they come up with some very complicated scenario that's better off not skipped it because it contains so many components that automating it will take longer than 
clicking three times. So PowerShell logging is also a good tool for that. Uh, thirdly, I, uh, I tend to forget what I do when I'm typing PowerShell code. So I also use it as a log for myself so I can go back to what did I execute? How do I, uh, how did I do what I did yesterday? PS readline is a good tool as well. It uh, comes with logging, but it's not installed on servers. So for servers, PowerShell logging is the way to go. Okay. Uh, anything else about PowerShell logging you would like to know? It depends. Uh, it, it depends on the scenario. It depends how many steps are executed on your server. Uh, I heard figures between two and four percent. Uh, I haven't done any uh, performance baseline to uh, to establish what the what the impact is. Yeah. Uh, every every PowerShell session will be uh, will be logged, so a run space will also be logged. Um, you mean in the implication header, or uh, or you mean if you have multiple run spaces? Use every. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I must say that I have not run into that scenario, so I can't tell you, I'm sorry. Yep. Yes. Uh, yeah, you can, you can skip that. You can either have a, a scheduled task or something, uh, something along those. You have to do something yourself. There's no, no, uh, there's no, uh, no policy you can set to automatically prune your logs. Yeah, for the event logs, uh, for the event logs, it just automatically rotates unless you set it up differently. Uh, but the the log files they can fill up uh, fill up your disk. It will look very scary. It's like it, I would not export all data. I would determine what is the interesting data for you to keep. It's like enabling uh, auditing on Active Directory. You can you can audit everything on audit, uh, Active Directory, uh, but if you do that, you'll have you either have logs that are 100 gigabytes per day. Or you'll have to do some kind of filtering. So if you're sending it somewhere else, doing event forwarding, which is what I would recommend, then you have to select what kind of data is interesting for you. Yep. Yes. But when you're looking at event log, uh, you have to get the right events, because there's a lot of events for one command. That's something you should keep in mind when you're doing an uh, event for one. Uh, so, 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 yeah, so the question is, uh, if you have a big script that's running, it's spread out over multiple event logs, can you see it as a single script being executed? Yes, you can, but that is 
what I was uh, what I was showing with the regular expressions I was doing that I was going uh, that I was going to the transaction log. You kind of have to strip the information out of it, so that's still a manual task. There are some modules uh, and scripts out there that help you with it, uh, but you'll have to determine what kind of information is exactly uh, relevant to what you're doing. Because the default is we'll log everything. If it's enough for you to know, okay, this script was called with these parameters, and I don't care what the contents of the script was, then you can just extract that bit, forward that to your for, uh, your, your event collector and go from there. Do you see? Yep. Uh, I'll have to move on because otherwise I'll get a bell. So. Last one is we'll be working with uh, Procmon. Uh, there we go. Let's see. So I have 10 minutes left. We'll go over this quick. Uh, how many people are not familiar with Procmon? Okay, good. Then I can show it. I like that. So, Procmon, here we go. So this tool uh, monitors any activity on your system based on the filter you put in. So I'll quickly go to the filter. Uh, let's reset the filter into the default filter. So we can see a lot of events are gathering here. I'll just let it run for five seconds. You can see that in five seconds, we already have 5,000 events. So this is something uh, it's, it's well, in a sense, worse than PowerShell logging because you get a lot of information. So this is just something you run at the moment you want to gather some information. So, what can we set up here? Uh, what I'll do is I'll set up a filter uh, called desktop copy. And what this filter does, I'll open up the filter and show you. So this is has all the default uh, has all the default uh, exclusions of a uh, Procmon, so it excludes all the system things that you're most likely not interested in. And I've added uh, this rule, path begins with C users yard desktop. So if any operation happens on C users desktop, Procmon will show it to us. So I'll activate this filter. Uh, I'll click this button to clear what we have here now. And I'll open up the capture. So what we can see here is the current filter excludes all events. So this is what we want because nothing's happening on the desktop. So let's copy this file and see what we get in Procmon. So we we'll stop the capture and you can see that there's a lot of events for something as simple as uh, copying a file. So this is something that's a little bit painful when you're working with Pokemon, you want to be able to automate this in a better way. So how can we do this? You can do this with PowerShell. So what we'll do here, I'll delete the files again. So, Procmon to be done. And I'll create my own uh, filter. So, the filter I'll make here is uh, I'll set up default exclusions. So, I'll exclude everything that is Procmon or system related. Set it in a string. So, if you look at default exclusions, it's a long list. And then I'll uh, set up the path, begin script, see users, include, so this is exactly the same as I just showed in the GUI. I'll be using a community script for this, it's start Pokemon. Uh, in the GitHub repository, I'll share all the links with blog posts describing what the script does exactly. I'm just going to show the output, uh, output now. 
So I'll run this. Important part is I've set the duration for 10 seconds. So it will give me 10 seconds to copy over the file. So I'll run this. I'll go to PowerShell and I'll copy something to the desktop. You can see the file was here. We go back to PowerShell. I stored it into the output variable. And we'll take a look what kind of output we get from that. Here we go. There's a lot of output, similar to what we just saw in uh, in Pokemon. So if you take a look at this, we have 400 results. That's a bit much. Let's use get member. We can see what kind of details are available. So we have the detail operation path, the pit. We'll open up one of these results. We can see ah, Explorer was doing something. To make it a bit more manageable, we'll just sort it by uh, process name, so you can see which processes have access to desktop. So you can see explorer.exe, we're not really interested in that. You can see the search protocol, we can establish, well, it's probably not the search pro protocol that created the file there. And MSP, and so that's uh, antivirus. So PowerShell seems like a pretty solid lead that PowerShell actually created this file. So. Let's take a look a bit further. We'll filter on create file. And you can see that there's a couple of processes that created the file, including PowerShell. And we'll go to PowerShell. You can see here, these are all the actions that PowerShell took uh, with files on the desktop. It also tells us what the process ID is. So if you do get process, you can see, yeah, it's this PowerShell process, and you can also find out who is running this process, if the process is still running, otherwise you'll have to, uh, otherwise you'll have to immediately gather that information the moment you run uh, Procmon. Okay, um, does this make sense? So, uh, let's see. I'll skip to the summary. Not very difficult. So, what I've shown, uh, how can you set up uh, PowerShell logging? What kind of PowerShell logging do we have available? Uh, I've shown that you can expose what server manager is doing in the background and how you can use this to find out how a server was configured or your GUI clicking colleague has installed something, you can figure out exactly what he has installed. Um, how you can use uh, PowerShell logging to automate uh, tasks uh, and how you can use a Plugmon from PowerShell to find out uh, what is happening on your system. I gave an example uh, with something like a file copy. Other uses of this is uh, for example, you have an application from a, from a third-party vendor. It's not well documented. What you'll do, you set up a filter. You'll just see what the program is doing. Uh, you see, if I change this setting, it's writing this to this, this to the registry. And using that information, you can build your own script, your own function, that does the same that the third-party GUI application is doing. And using that knowledge, you're able to automate things that you would otherwise not be able to automate. In a perfect world, everything would be well documented, but we all know we don't live in a perfect world. So when there's no perfect world, we'll use logging uh, to find out what is going on. And we use that information to, uh, to automate our stuff. <coughs> so what's next? Uh, we'll have a 15 minute break. We'll get some coffee. Uh, I'll be here uh, until the next speaker comes if you have any questions. Uh, if you want to be in touch with me, if you want to play with this stuff, uh, I'll put everything up on my GitHub. You can reach out to me on Twitter. No one ever talks to me on Twitter, so you can just send me a message. I'll definitely respond within two weeks. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, last, yes. Yes.
Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. 